Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. It's such a pleasure to be able to speak to you today. Um, maybe you could just kick off with a brief introduction to this incredible film, Seriously Red. People who don't know anything about it, what can they expect? Uh, well, it's a girl who is in a job who doesn't quite fit in, like probably most of us. And um, she decides to become a, a Dolly Parton impersonator. And so becoming somebody else, she figures out who she really is. And it seems like it was a bit of a passion project for you, you know, on writing duties, also starring in it. Tell us a bit about the journey to this film being made. What was the original spark of the idea and, and why was it so important for you to tell the story? Yeah, I was, I was just been, I was brought up by my dad. Um, he always told his daughters that go out there, Bob, be a success, you know, make your own career. And I just didn't feel like I was getting or feeling successful. Um, so I started investigating that. Why do I want success and what does it look like? And, um, and so I very quickly realized that to me, success looked like Dolly Parton. I just, I've adored her for years. I think she's got it all going on. She's smart and sassy, talented, looks like a sex bomb, but seems to be every girl's fantasy of a best friend. She's the only person we can all agree on in the world. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, she just holds so much grace and so much humor and I just love it. I love her. So to figure out what success was, I just went, okay, well, let me just start with what I think it is, which is Dolly Parton. And I will write to try and figure out what that was. And I give very quickly, identity became a really strong theme of um and it really plays into how we live and all the filters we use and how we like to portray ourselves online and um especially as an actress it's kind of like a necessity you have to have followers to get another job and or to get a job and you're sort of going oh gosh i need to really figure out how that works and pay for followers but i mean i haven't but i haven't but um <laughs> So identity became a really strong theme of trying to um, uh, trying to figure out who you are, and also just it made it really kind of taught me to remind myself to check back in with my own, own identity, and it's changed since it was last year, let alone what it was ten years ago, and and keep just nurturing that, and it's like a little diamond box of treasures, and yeah, it just it just reminded me to kind of keep keep going back to who I am today and who, yeah, what that, what that identity is. But anyway, I think I've gone off track. I've gone off track, but um, uh, that's sort of the journey. So I started off writing and I, uh, one of the first quotes that I stuck up on my apartment wall was you got to work a dream. You got to put feet and wings on it. And that's really what kept me going and kept me coming back to the script over and over again. And keeping 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 on keeping on the dream of i want to be an actress i want to be a working actress i want to be doing good work and i don't want to look pretty all the time i want to look fat and ugly and cute and sexy and all the different things um and so we got the script rose burnham was like a dear old friend and a colleague she took it to danny nozel who's dolly's manager and said we've got 50 cents can we please <laughs> have Dolly's blessings. We can't make it without Dolly's blessing. And we also can't make it without Dolly's music. If she would read it, be so kind for her to read it and see what she thought. She read it twice in one night. She loved it. She gave us her blessing, promised to help with the songs. And it just took us. Yeah, she was almost one of the first people to say yes. And it took us a bunch of other years to convince everybody else. But out of that is what, why we started um, our production company, Dollhouse Pictures, with the director, Gracie Otto of Seriously Red, and our lead producer, Jess, uh, Jessica Carrera, and our other dear friend, Shannon Murphy, who is doing a lot of British work at the moment. Um, and yeah, we started our production company to get, and for this film to be our first calling card. Mm. That's amazing. And, and of course, your own transformation 
to becoming Dolly, you know, like our the character that we follow, is just phenomenal. So was that something you already kind of had in in your in your toolbox, you know, and, or was that something you had to work at, you know, the look and and the voice and you know the knowing all the quotes and the accent. I mean, what, what was that like? And, and that must have been a lot of fun to play. Oh, I loved it. I just love the shit out of it. I really, I really recommend anyone um, doing some cosplay because it's so empowering and interesting and it does evoke different things in you. But yeah, I did all the things. I did all the accent lessons and, you know, watched about so much Dolly, but I've always, I guess I have throughout the whole journey and, um, and also embodying Red. Um, Red is also a muse, a friend of mine who I find uh, it's a, it's also a little quite a lot of me of course but um a girlfriend who i find just so interesting and hilarious and avant-garde and um so also embodying embodying her and then embodying her embodying dolly was so much fun and there's just so much freedom because i'm not playing dolly parton it's not a biopic um don't be disappointed so but that's also fun because you can kind of you can kind of loosen it up a little bit and do your your quirky version of it so um yeah i felt like putting i had to get dolly fit like the first week of filming i was huge wig pins in my hair breastplate corset high heels and i was like i got it i got i just sort of lay down because i was like that this is a lot this is and and i'm fairly physical so i was like wow this is you know she 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 has a lot going on um but then after that, I felt super cheeky and sort of sexy and mad. And, ah, oh, I love feeling all those things. And, you know, mentioning that, of course, Rose Byrne. I mean, at first, I, I, I knew she was going to be in the film, but I hadn't quite caught that it was straight away when we, when Elvis comes on the screen. I'm like, that's Rose Byrne. I mean, and I just love all, all the stuff she's done. She's such a great comedic actress. And, you know, she really seems to, like, throw herself into, you know, this role, Austin Butler, you know, move over, here comes Rose Byrne. And, and also Bobby <laughs> Cannavale, and, you know, he's done some really interesting things. So what was it like working alongside these two in particular and the rest of your amazing cast? Oh, um, Rose is, I mean, she's, she's the most incredible artist. She's incredibly funny. She's drop dead beautiful, but she's got such a great intelligent sense of humor and, um, so many people it takes a beat to figure out that it's her it's it, even though even the, like the, the edit we had two editors and the second editor that came on she it took her a whole week to figure it out she just kind of sat with it and went with it not even thinking um but so many people have had that same experience of just going we know that she's in there but who what is she what is she doing um but she's just funny she's and the more i watch that some of those scenes the more she just makes me laugh um and working with Rose is so fun. It's like, she's like a sister, best, she's my best friend. So we have such great chemistry and we know each other so well, but we still find each other interesting. And I think that's all you can ask in a scene partner. It's, we can, we're, we're very safe with each other and it's just a hoot. And um, Bobby, Bobby Cannavale is just, I mean, they don't call him Broadway Bobby for nothing. He just comes on. You know, he's got this energy. He's like, okay, cool, okay, cool. You know what I'm thinking? He's just like all there. And he's just like a hunk of flesh and you just want to just smack him and kiss him at the same time. Um, he He's a giving actor. He's He improvises, he's hilarious, and he also can break your heart. So um, we were really lucky to have them um celeste barber uh i've known celeste for years and um we tried to work together on another project but it didn't quite work out timing wise and it was just perfect that she was around because it was during covid so sort of whoever's whoever was stuck in australia <laughs> which was actually a blessing because often with projects they go it the world the grand world who can do this part you know whereas when it was the covid it was like shit who's who's here who is this is kind of great because it's kind of limited our offering in a way and that's you can kind of dig deeper and find people who actually write for the part so Celeste, Celeste was perfect because she was um not far from where we we're shooting and she was perfect for the role and she's a great actress I met her originally as an actress 
Um, so that was fun. Yeah. Who else did? Time. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Just, sorry. Gonna, sorry. just very quickly. Um, two, two main thing, other things I wanted to ask about was kind of the look and feel of the film. And, you know, I don't know whether it's like the Australian humour and also kind of like the kitsch sort of tacky glamour, you know, it's making me think of Muriel's wedding or Strictly Ballroom. So I wonder that was kind of, you had in mind as well as the kind of look and feel of the film. And, you know, what do you think the key themes are? I mean, there's a lot in there, isn't there, about finding your identity and, and also being different and being able to lean into that. But then also you can't go through life also pretending to be someone else. You also have to find who your true self is. So, you know, what, what do you think the take is off? So, um... Uh, Gracie is a Gracie Otto, our director, is a real auteur, and she was very strict on. Uh, she's got a, a Malvador feel to her sometimes in some of her work, so she was very strict on the color palette. She wanted it to be those rich tones. Often Australian films, especially if it's the outback, it's often pastel and kind of quite um, washed out, or it's super dark and we're killing everybody. Um, and so she was very strict on the color palette and um, worked tirelessly with um, Toby Oliver, our director of photography. And in and also it it played into um, Tim Chappell's work, who was the costume designer, who also did Priscilla Queen of the Desert in what he was creating and, and how it would feel and the playfulness and the two different worlds, but making sure it feels like it's the same film as well as Cassie Hanlon, who did all the wigs and the makeup, she, who also did Priscilla, the Queen of the Desert. Um, they were, they just exploded all of their talent and Penny Southgate, who did all of the set design. So yeah, it was very conscious. It was very um, particular with the little money that we had. Gracie had a very strong vision of what she wanted to, wanted it to look like. Um, and in terms of the takeaway or the the themes of the film, yeah, I, I, the the strongest the the strongest sort of one liner really for me is um, is um, you know sort of figure out who you are, but don't take yourself too seriously in those sorts of terms you know play and have fun and also don't lose sight of yourself um but also just cheer up a little bit <laughs> cheer up a little bit um yeah I think I really wanted to make a film that was a little bit of joy and that had heart and I love I mean I love Phoebe Waller-Bridge's work and you know she's she's in she's incredible and she I feel like she does that in her in her work, she probably has a lot more experience in money and whatever, but um, um, I love that, I mean, it's dark, but it has always a tone of joy and um, and something that we can kind of, yeah, it does, oh my gosh, it's just so much. I'm rambling, I'm rambling, I'm rambling, get it together. <laughs> but yeah, there's um, identity is definitely a strong theme, as I mentioned earlier. Um, as yeah and family strong family ties and don't forget who you are and where you come from um yeah i've had a lot of resp big responses from for the gay community or or people that feel like they had to come out in some other way whether it's sexuality or something else and um and so i've had a lot of touching uh, touching remarks from i guess all walks of life Mums really love the film as well, and there's a lot. We've I've had like a lot of grown men just go. I didn't think I was well, didn't think I was gonna like that, but uh, good on you. Thoroughly enjoyed that. <laughs> sort of, they really wanting to tell me that they were shocked that they really enjoyed. It. <laughs> so um, yeah, I hope I hope people uh, enjoy it and take a take a few things away and maybe just remind tap into their little pocket of identity and go, oh, I don't have to be that same person I was last week. I've changed a bit. Well, I think I think that's also, you know, proves the fact that the idea that sort of like female-led films, you know, focusing on the female experience are somehow only for a certain kind of, um, you know, demographic, because, you know, yeah. actually, and, and we're seeing that more and more, aren't we, that, that the, more of these films that female-led and female-written are being made, but it's taken a while. So do you I hope this is like a sign of good things to come? I hope so. I mean, I feel like it is. Um, um, it's still... Uh, we're, we're definitely still battling sort of Marvel at the box office and 
um, that sort of form of movie telling and storytelling, I guess, in terms of cinema releases. And they're mostly still male driven. So we've probably still got a way to go, but, um, but we're in there. All us girls are in there. <laughs> and just very quickly, do you know what you're going to work on next? And obviously you've done so many different things. You're coming from theatre and, you know, have you got any bucket list ambitions that you haven't yet, you know, fulfilled? Yeah, I've got a TV show that I'm writing. Um, I'm staying on the theme of joy. Actually, when I met Dolly Parton, I had a little bit of an epiphany. I was talking to Dolly and we just had this little moment and I just sort of went, wow, I'm just going to do, I'm just going to do joy. I'm going to get deeper in that. It's going to be sexy. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be cool. But it was just this little moment between her and I, and I thought she does joy. I'm just going to, I'm going to keep on doing that. Um, but still with music, still with probably with a little bit more dance this time. Um, but yeah, I want to get, I want to get the world dancing again and not TikTok style, not at each, not at each, not at the camera, but each other. That's a very good idea. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that with me. Congratulations on the really wonderful film. And I can't wait for everyone else to have the chance to see it. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Thanks. Uh, nice thanks to meet you. See you. Bye. Have a good day.